Hey everybody, Yaka here, bringing you a brand new episode of Busy Adults. Today we're talking about the Cleric class, favorite subclasses, and what we like and dislike about them. Hope you enjoy. Doo-doo. Beep! Doo-doo. Beep! Doo-doo. <laughs> We both went for the noises. That was pretty good. I'm back, bitches! Sadly, we're still yaka We can't get all four of us on at once anymore, guys. No, that's alright. There is a good amount. There's nothing wrong with three. Nothing wrong with three. <sighs> How are you guys doing? Anything new? Anything exciting? Nope, just work. Yeah, <laughs> work, work, and more work. Yep, work, work, work. Hooray! You know, you it's bad when you're excited over like a 52, 53 hour week. <gasps> when the week prior you were working like almost 70 hours and you're at like 52 and you're like, whoop, whoop! Holy balls. I'm just excited to not be fucking up as much. <laughs> oh, because you're like <laughs> learning on the job yeah, now? Yeah, I'm... Two months in, guys. Oh, two months in. Apparently I'm doing really good because the boss was like, how do you know all this? When did you start? What the hell? Oh, so. that's good. Yeah. So, hooray. That is a plus. It is a plus. Yep. I was over at a friend's last night. And Ooh. first of all, I stayed up way too late. <laughs> we're just like checking the, you know, it's, we're outside and it's late and we're getting bit up by mosquitoes. We're like, yeah, we should probably take off, you know, whatever. Like down at our phone to see what time it was. It was 11 o'clock. I was going to call 11. On a Monday, <laughs> 11 p.m. on a Monday. Oh. And I'm like, why did we do this? What, what possessed me to go out on a school night? We're old guys. Yeah, that's too late, because I got home, then I had to get Muffin ready for bed, and, like, get myself ready for bed, and then I didn't actually fall asleep until, like, 12.30 or so. So Damn. Yeah, that was fun. Tell you what, man, you have kids, and it just, like, you instantly become old. Yeah, I know. It's fucking ridiculous. Because the funny thing is, I literally had on my Facebook memories pop up, like, five or six years ago, Ray, where Candace and I came over to your guys' house and we fucking roasted marshmallows. <laughs> and that was in one of those, that was like one of those nights before. And like all the people tagged in it, we all have kids now. And like, it's hilarious because it was like you, your husband, Tiffany, I think was there. And I think there was a couple other people. And then Candace and I, and it's just like, oh my God, we all have kids. And that was one of those, it was like in the middle of the week, we had bonfire. I think we were over at your house still. 10, 11 o'clock, yeah. just having a bonfire on a work night and just no issues whatsoever. We all, you know, went our separate ways. I think at the time we lived right around the corner from you. That's so it's like, oh no, we've got to go home. <laughs> it's so, okay, and we're home. But, yeah, three <laughs> minutes later you were home. But still, it was just like, yeah, we were in your guys' house for a hot minute and then we went home and didn't have kids. So it's like, oh, hey. The, then we, the then, amount you know, we of all had orchestrating kids. it takes oh, to go God. to get like go from out inside of the house to outside of the house, <laughs> like that's oh, yeah. it. Just to go even like check the mail, I have to set so much stuff up and get things going before I go outside. You guys have it even worse because you have smaller ones than me, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, my kids are crazy, too. Uh, Henry, now, without any assistance, can climb on the couches. Ha 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 ha. Hooray. So, that's fun. Figured that out today. Yeah, which means he's going to be starting to climb out of his crib or pack and play, like, today. <laughs> I have another level down in his crib that I can go. One more level. Good luck to you, my friend. I know. Oh, but anyways, so I was at, it, as it was Jacob Tiffany's house that I went over, um, and they had this, like, can of margarita, like, it was pre-mixed, and it looked like real, one of those really old oil cans, it was just cylindrical, and it had a tw- top on it, and it's just, like, a metal can, and by God, that was the best margarita that I have had <laughs> in so long. 
it, it didn't taste like a sickly sweet you know gr- lime green margarita mix like it it was very smooth it wasn't over alcoholy but there was alcohol you know it it says that there's like ginger and some other spice in there whatever and like a not overly it wasn't a big production it tasted like a simple margarita and i have to find out where to find these things because <laughs> <laughs> it's huge it's like it serves 12 which really means it served two <laughs> or in my case what? one serving yeah. yeah one full serving in this big ass 64 ounce container yeah i was gonna say it's probably like a gallon or okay. or, or like what? a two a liter a two one and a half liter maybe I don't fucking know. It was really good. I need to find one. <laughs> I need to find out where to get these things. Yeah. Very delicious. Well, I guess to bring it on back to D and D, guys. Um, we're Ooh, doing. Ooh, I don't want to talk about D and D. We're talking <laughs> about the cleric, Ray's favorite class in the world. I do like a cleric. I really like. I okay. She is the I've, cleric. I've played, yeah. I'm, I'm the mom of the group. I've like, even when I'm not playing the cleric, I'm the mom. Like, I'm just even trying when we're to not get not playing D and D. She's the mom. <laughs> like, I just try to get everybody doing things. Uh, I was at a bachelorette party a little bit ago, and all these bitches were drunk. <laughs> And they all win. these bitches were drunk. <laughs> all these bitches were. I drunk. know of this bachelorette party. <laughs> yes, you do. We went into a store, and again, these bitches was drunk, and they're all like, oh, look, the TikTok booty leggings. No. And so they put on the TikTok booty leggings over their clothes (laughs) in the middle of the store at, like, 6.30 in the evening, like, middle of, like, it's still light out. (laughs) At least they put them over their clothes and did just drop their pants right then and there and try them on. That would have been especially difficult because they were both wearing overalls. Like <laughs> Yeah, see? There you go. <laughs> and so these drunk bitches was wearing these t- TikTok booty leggings and they were taking pictures and they were like, well, where's the cheese? Because they thought they went into... Frankenmuth, Michigan's Cheese House. <laughs> um, if you're a local, you remember where the Cheese House used to be and where it moved. Like, yep. literally a hundred feet to the left. Like, it didn't, it didn't make a big move, but it did move. And they were like, well, where's the cheese? And I'm like, you dummies. <laughs> the, the Cheese House moved, like, three years ago. Get with it. And so I'm herding the cats because they're, like I said, they're all drunk. (laughs) I've had two drinks at that point and I'm like pushing them out of the door. Like, go this way, please. So that I'm, yeah. Cleric equals mom equals me. Yep. It's always fun when you're the function and drunk. (laughs) Like, hey, I haven't lost my shit. Let's go. Yeah. Well, you drank more than us. Yup. Can still hold my shit together. Thank you very much. Right. Let's go. Right. I'm not a lightweight like you. Come on. Don't be so sloppy. <laughs> Monkey has seen me do this multiple times. I've also seen him pray to the porcelain gods a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Yep. And the moon. That was one point. <laughs> I didn't see you pray to the moon, but I know nope. that night. <gasps> yep. Speaking of praying, <laughs> yeah, there's our good segue. That's the segue I was looking for. We're talking about the cleric class today on our series, going through the classes and talking about on any of our history with such classes, and then our favorite subclass of the classes. I said class a lot. Class, um, class, class, <laughs> class, class. Let's keep going. <laughs> Um, so the cleric, a little bit of information. Um, it's got a D8 for a hit dice. Um, it has light armor, medium armor, and shield proficiency, simple weapons proficiency. Um, it's proficient in wisdom and charisma saving throws. 
and you can to choose two skills to be proficient in from history, insight, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Um, most of the time, a cleric will be wearing, like, well, they have medium armor proficiency, so chainmail is usually, like, where, well, no, chainmail's heavy, isn't it? Studded uh, leather and leather is, like, the highest, those, or, is Studded it? leather's light. Is it? Oh. Yep. Is it, um, oh, okay, scale mail. That's what it is. Scale mail is the, the biggest medium armor. If I'm wrong, fuck me. Whatever. Ha- um, half plate. Half plate. Oh, half plate. I was going to say, I thought they could wear heavy armors. Um, No. I think that depends on what domain they choose. It does domain. Yeah, it does depend on the domain. Like forge domain, yes, I believe you can. Yeah, I I think you're right in that one. Um, so they are a spellcaster. Their main spellcasting spell is spell skill. <laughs> Stat is wisdom that they use. They have cantrips and regular spells. And they stock their spells for the day. So they have a shit ton of them available. And at the beginning of their day or at the end of their long rest, they choose X amount of spells from their very long list of spells that they have. Um, Let's see. What do they got? And then where it comes into um, what they do is they're usually a healing class they can definitely like (laughs) fuck people up for sure if you have a party that isn't dying every three seconds the cleric has the opportunity to fuck shit up um a battle mercy if you will uh but usually they're a healer because nobody can keep their shit together and the cleric has to bring people back to life (laughs) Thank you. Uh, And where it gets into different types, um, it goes into the type of domain that a cleric chooses. Um, And, you know, they're good against undead. They got lots of good skills to turn and destroy undead. Um, And one of their craziest or biggest features that they have is the divine intervention uh, class is it a class feature or a, what? A, what is that called? I think it's a class I think feature. It's a class feature. I would think it is a class okay. feature. So divine intervention is literally you pray to the gods. <laughs> you literally pray to the gods. Hope you roll your level or lower on a d100 if you're level 19 and lower. <laughs> um, and if you get it, hooray! You will. Make a big request from your DM, who will then interpret your request the best way that this, whatever your deity or god can help you, and help you do it. Unless you're without, level... Oh. I was just going to say, without monkey pawing the fuck of, out of it. Yeah, because that's your god. Like, y- y'all are supposed to be, you know, good buddies, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, unless your character is Here's weird. my thing. If you're... I would... Be like if you're worshiping like the traveler or some type of shit, like some chaotic <laughs> deity. Then I yes. would totally monkey paw the fuck out of that. Well, I I could see that, but yeah, it depends on the DM. DM's yeah. discretion, I guess. Yeah, it depends on the DM. Depends on your character's background and the type of things that you do. But usually, when you have a divine intervention and it goes your way, you can get a lot of assistance or help. Nobody, you know, obviously a DM is going to be like. You know, oh, deity, can you please kill the big, bad, evil guy for me? They're like, no, fuck you. We'll stun him for 1d4 rounds. There you go. You know, that's that's. <laughs> I what don't you... think I would go that far. I think I'd be like, oh, you're not going to kill him, but I'm going to wipe out some of his armies and minions that you have to fight your way through. Exactly. And that's where it comes into working with your DM on a divine intervention. Unless you're level 20... And you can just get it. Hooray for just, you. Just every, talk to your god whenever you want. Every seven days, you can be like, hey god, hit me, like, can I can I get an alley-oop here or something? <laughs> and 
I mean, they are bound to you and you to them, and you're an epic level 20 character. Uh, but it just works, which is bananas. I think the thing is, <laughs> I think the thing is, like, with level 20, you're basically their avatar yeah. or their champion, so that's why it just it works. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you are basically their vessel onto this realm. Yeah, you have a solid connection with them. <laughs> For sure. And as always, guys, go back to talk to your DMs. Always communicate with your DMs. What you plan well, on doing. What the book says I can do this. Uh, Fuck the rules. <laughs> talk to Dark your Sun. Dark Sun. Dark Sun. <laughs> I saw somebody... Um... By the time this comes out, the new, the other, those two books had been released already. Probably. The, the dragon. Uh, the, the dragon space, one, I think, comes out in October. Book. I think that one comes out in October, so this episode oh. will probably be released by then. But the Feywild one. <laughs> but the yes. Feywild one. The September. Feywild one had been announced, but the space dragon, that's what I'm calling it. The space dragon that's one, because I can't think of what it's called at the moment, hadn't up. been announced. And somebody had posted in a D and D Facebook page that I'm on. And what do you think the first comment was on there? Fucking dark sun. Fucking dark sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's always dark sun. It is always dark sun. Here and- it is. Fizzbands, Fizzban or Fizzbon? I don't know. Treasury Fizban. of Dragons. Okay, Fizzban's Treasury of Dragons. That's what it is. And oh it's wait, a, no, it's like what? extra planar dragons, right? Hold up. Hold up. No, yeah, okay, that's right. Yep, Fizzbane's Treasury of Dragons. There, I had, on this website, there was some weird information, like, it released in 2014. But, no? <laughs> I don't think no? so. No? <laughs> <laughs> Copyright here says 2021, guys. So I think you're fucking wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazon is always fucking it up for Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> I, re- I know, it's <laughs> bad. <laughs> um... But uh, going into the divine domains or any domains that there are available, that's where you start to specialize your, like your you know, quote unquote subclass of the cleric. Um, there's a lot of them. There is. Tasha's uh, came out with two more. One of them, um, if, if you guys look at RPG bot for any of your information on classes, breakdowns and the such, um he says to ban a certain one let me see which one i think it's the peace domain yeah peace domain very first sentence ban this domain i do not say that lightly ban this domain is it op or something oh it's fucking op as shit all right let's look at the peace (laughs) domain real quick hold on let me get in here p go for it peace um yeah according to this guy peace domains full of extremely obvious abuse cases and problems which break the math of the game and can turn an otherwise totally normal party into an unstoppable force of both incredible tactical efficiency and absolutely ridiculous shenanigans right from first level peace domain can provide two d4 on attack rolls and saving throws to two members of the party per reaction i don't know how Many times it doesn't go into detail on his site, but it's... um, it looks like you can use it equal times equal to your proficiency bonus, regain mm-hmm. expended uses on a long rest. Yeah, so right there, you're already at first level, fucking up everything. Um, so I'll read it. it the feature is emboldening bond. You can mm-hmm. fortune empowering bond among people who are at peace with one another. Mm. Uh, as an action you choose a number of willing creatures within 30 feet of you and this can include yourself equal to your proficiency bonus you create a magical bond among them for 10 minutes or until you use this feature again while bonded the creature is and well mm. while any (laughs) bonded creature is within 30 feet of another a creature can roll a d4 and add that number rolled to an attack roll ability check or saving throw each creature can add the d4 no more than once per turn okay so that must be an errata because he's saying two so they may have updated that yeah maybe it was in ua for a while or something like that i don't know he references tasha's so i don't know well i'm using 5e tools 
So yeah, five E tools would be up to date. I yeah, I assume this is up to date. So I mean, it's essentially a bless, but without having to use a spell slot for it, and and it's based on a proficiency modifier. Yeah. So, so. I don't really think that's too oh. OP. It's just a free bless. Free, a couple free blesses. Well, yeah, free bless that also works. No, because bless works on attack rolls, ability, and ability checks, but not saving throws. Yeah. I don't know. It's All I know is... Pumped up bless. Yeah. So, I don't know. I thought it was funny that he's just like, ban it. Just ban this right now, DMs, I swear to God. I mean... <clears throat> I could see that because I've I've seen people with do that for the like grave cleric. Be like, hey, this shit gets a little crazy, <laughs> which is funny because that's what I'm doing in the next campaign. I mean, I've also said, seen said people that say ban it. Be like, here's how to fuck a grave oh, cleric yeah. right the hell up, and it's just like, well, yeah. I think it's just the fact that they can do spare the dying as a cantrip, but that kind. Of, of irks people with range because spare the dying yes. is a touch by being a great cleric circle of mortality adds 30 feet of range and it yep. makes it a bonus action yeah i think it's just it's that's what people freak out about and it's like there's ways around it but okay <clears throat> but i figure you know since i was least prepped for this i can go first you know i've only got the phb and Xanathirs, but I did look through, and even if I had all these books, I probably still would pick the one from Xanathirs of the Forge Domain. Yes. Yeah, tell me more. Just for the simple fact of, you get the heavy armor. Yes, this is going to scream dwarf, it's going to scream <laughs> your stereotypical dwarven cleric, but it's cool, because I know like in previous editions... Dwarfs were able to wear, or not dwarfs, um, clerics, you could wear, like, heavy armor. Correct. So when you said, hey, I had to pull up the PHB, look real quick, and be like, oh, they can only use medium armor. That's weird. Yep. Um, Forge Domain instantly gives them proficiency with heavy armor and smith tools. And it even says, you know, Forge Domain, you're kind of that humble blacksmith, or the hoity-toity elf that makes diamond-encrusted arrows. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and everything in between. You know, Forge Domain features, first level you get bonus proficiencies, domain spells, Blessing of the Forge. That's the thing that I think is broke as fuck. You pick Forge Domain, Blessing of the Forge. Level 1. You gain the ability to imbue magic into weapons and armor. At the end of a long rest, you can touch one non-magical object that is either a suit of armor or a simple or martial weapon. Until the end of your next long rest or you die, that object becomes a magic item granting either plus one to AC if it's armor or plus one to attack and damage rolls if it's a weapon. Yeah. Early on, that is broke as fuck. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. When do, you, when do players normally get plus one items? I mean, depending on the campaign, like third or fourth level i would start to think you know you might get them level two but like this is literally like once a long rest you go hey weapon it's magical now oh <laughs> yeah basically yeah you know higher levels yeah that that plus one plus isn't gonna matter as much because when you get higher levels you're gonna have the shit anyway so, like, the way I view this is probably early on, you're going to use it for <clears throat> armor if you're squishy or, you know, you might imbue your frontline attacker with a magic item. And then later on, you're just going to be like, hey, um, you have this piece of armor, plus one. Like, oh, you have just a regular ring, plus one. <laughs> like, it's just something simple like that. Like, it loses its abilities higher level, but still. See, okay, here's me being an asshole. I'm the other asshole. You're the first one, I'm the second one. And I'm just the player. I'm going to go to a <laughs> shop, buy a shitty, a regular sword, 
throw plus one on it, go to another shop. Hey, I want to sell this plus one sword. Here you go. Yep, that sure looks magical. Get my money, get out of town, and then I'll buy my own shit at a later time. Did you time. multi-class into a rogue? <laughs> Just because you're I mean, a cleric see, that's fine. Mean that. <clears throat> okay. To counter your assholishness with my assholishness. Yeah. Cool. You do that. The minute you rest and this becomes a normal thing, they're going to know. They're going to keep an eye out. And depending on how petty, because I will do dice rolls, <laughs> I and depending on how petty that shopkeeper is and what the dice say, they might spend some money to put a bounty on your bitch ass. Yep. I'll make Sorry, friends with the warlock that has mask of many faces, and we're going to take all the towns by storm. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, absolutely, one thousand percent. I listen. And, I haven't and played. And counter your mask of many faces. Mm-hmm. That's fine. They would have seen who you are traveling with. That's fine. And they'll go after the party, and sooner or later, the party's gonna be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I wonder where all this money came from. <laughs> I don't shit gold, people. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I ha- we haven't played D&D in a while, and I've just been looking at a lot of memes, and I get bad ideas when I look at memes, and this is a bad idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. I want to see happen and blow up in your face. I would, you know what, you know, anybody out there who wants to use this, don't tell your DM. Like, <laughs> just, just gonna do just it, try to, Just try to sneak it in, in your next campaign if. You know, if you're one of these Forge domain clerics, and just try it out. We'll see. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, uh, their second level ability is kind of like, meh. It's Artisan's Blessing. You basically do an hour-long ritual that you create a simple weapon, a suit of armor, ten pieces of ammunition, a set of tools, or something. Basic equipment. And it can be worth no more than 100 gold pieces. You just kind of create a non-magical thing. And then you use your first level spell to make it magical. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, still, it's kind of like... At second level, you're kind of already having abilities. Oh, yeah. Like, you should have your armor, stuff like that. I mean, I I mean, for the selling, you make a little random piece of crap, and then you make it magical, then you sell it. And then you run. And then you run. <laughs> that way you don't have to buy a sword and then sell it to another shopkeep in the same town. You just sell it right to one and be done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Level six is Soul of the Forge. You gain resistance to fire damage. And while wearing heavy armor, you gain a plus one bonus to AC. God. Level eight, you get Divine Strike for 1d8 points of extra damage, fire damage. Level 14, it becomes 2d8. And then level 17 is... <clears throat> you're basically immune to fire. Oh, nice. Woohoo! Fire dragons! Right. And while heavy armor, you gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical attacks. So, that's kind of cool. I just like it because, again, it's that simp- that first level ability early on. And then you also, you know, it reminds me of that old school dwarven cleric that's like, I, I'll keep you alive. Yes. Yeah. I, I like the trope In like of full the, fucking battle play. Yeah, I like the clank, 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 <laughs> like the right. disadvantage on stealth checks cleric. That's yeah. my kind of cleric. <laughs> Always drunk. Oh yeah, and it's not like the Healy Healy cleric. This could, you know, oh, it's a Forge domain. Kill. Yeah, right. The Forge domain dude that could be you could do it like support or defensive, like not healing defensive, but like oh hey, I'm gonna cast like immunities and protections and shit like that. But I also like it just because you could also have it be like a just straight up like fucking battle mage. Like I'm in the front lines, rah. <laughs> yep. I made this hammer with Morden's beard and rod, and just like, oh yeah, like get up there. I love Morden. 
Praise be to Moradin. <laughs> He's a dwarven version of Odin. Yeah, yep. I'm cool with that. <laughs> yep. But that's what I got. That's a good uh, one. Yeah, I like it. I like the Forge Domain. Um, I've thought about it a couple of times, but I don't really ever care to play for clerics. So, it is what it is. But, Bye. in our next campaign, I am playing a cleric. <laughs> because I said, fuck it, we need heals. And we barely ever have heals anymore. That Now that Ray doesn't ever do the healer. Because I don't always want to be the healer. No. Hey, she played the healer in the first campaign and I kept know. you fuckers alive. She probably played enough lifetimes worth of clerics <laughs> in that one <laughs> campaign. Yes, well, she's I, done I it again. I was playing two clerics at the same time. Yep. In that campaign. This is true. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Busy Adults. You can find us on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and pretty much everywhere else on the internet. Make sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to wherever you listen to Busy Adults. That's B-U-S-Y-A-D-D-U-L-T-S. Now, back to the show. So I went with the Grave Cleric. The one we kind of already talked about a little. But, um... I don't know. I wanted to do something a little a little different. I didn't want to go straight death cleric because that's more evil. So I was like, ah, we'll go grave cleric because that seems kind of fun. Um, the main role of death, of a grave cleric is to keep your friends from dying. Not necessarily heal them. Just don't keep, don't let them die. That's it. So I guess first level you get circle of mortality. When you heal somebody when they're at zero hit points, your healing dice is already max. So whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is, whatever spell that you use, um, it'll raise them to the max of that healing spell if they're at zero. So that's cool. But the really cool part is you learn Spare the Dying as a cantrip. You can just use it all the time. And it has a range of 30 feet instead of a touch. And it's bonus action. So, yeah, it's kind of nuts. Kind of yeah, nuts. I definitely OP. <laughs> yeah. Definitely nice. Um, the not so great thing about the first level, they have another ability called Eyes of the Grave. It's like a really shitty detect evil, I guess. So. At first level, you gain the ability to occasionally sense the presence of undead, whose existence is an insult to the natural cycle of life. As an action, you can open your awareness to magically detected undead. Until the end of your turn, your next turn, you know the location of any undead within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and that isn't protected from divination magic. This sense doesn't tell you anything about a creature's capabilities or identity. You just know, there's something undead, or undead over here. That's it. Uh, you can use it a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, and you're gaining all uses when you finish a long rest. So, super situational. Yeah. If you know you're going into an undead situation, you're just, hey, how many of these bodies on the ground are actually undead? And that's it. <laughs> so Always if, check the skeletons. That's right. But if they're <laughs> behind walls or you're in a dungeon, you won't really know anything. I mean, the nice thing is, I guess, you know, with Ray and I being huge critters, like, we saw this in action with Caduceus. Yeah, that's true. And the cool thing about, you know, Eyes of the Grave is if there was ever anything, kind of like you said, oh, hey, there's bodies, instantly he'd be like, Eyes of the Grave. Yeah. Are any of these undead? If they were in something that was weird, because not to do a whole lot of spoilers for those who might still be catching up or just started late or whatever if they were in like a odd forest or anything like that where there might be some corruption he would use it like hey this plant life looks fucked up eyes of the grave i know it says use it as an action which means like oh hey if you're in battle you could use it i feel like like you said this is very situational i feel like it's going to be used more journey in yeah. role playing than like oh hey we're actually fighting like eyes of the grave yeah it's more for preparation if you're fighting you already know who the undead are they're in front of you killing hopefully you. yeah hopefully yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at that point you know you're just gonna be like hey 
we got stuff attacking us. Yeah. Do I really want to burn an action to be like, is there any undead? Are they undead? Right. Like, well, whatever they are, if they're undead, we're going to un undead them. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like, they're going to be re dead. <laughs> Super dead. So, yeah, so there's that. I mean,. Like I said, situational, and I could see it being useful if you're going into some weird haunted area or a graveyard or a weird forest or there's a shit ton of oh, bodies yeah. or something like that. Uh, sure. Or if your campaign setting is like, you know, vampires. Dark. Right. <laughs> Dark. Like a curse of Strahd. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, besides that, second level, your, chan- your channel divinity is Path to the Grave. So... You at second level, you can use your channel divinity. I cannot talk today, guys. Your channel divinity to mark another creature's life force for termination. Well, sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and there goes Ray. Bye. I, Ray. I'm fine. My my uh, camera just fell over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh no. Um, um, okay. So as an action, you can choose you can choose one creature you can see within thirty feet of you, cursing it until the end of your turn. The next time you or an ally of yours hits that cursed creature with an attack, the creature has a vulnerability to all of that attack's damage. And then the curse ends. Hell so, yeah. Which, yeah, that, that's great. Again, you know, big critters here. Uh, Talzin's character that he played as Caduceus, when it was time to go after, you know, a boss or a big enemy... He kept this in his back pocket and was like, Yasha, get him. Yep. You know, the, the big barbarian damage dealing lady. Like, yeah. Get him. Definitely work with your high damage dealers and use this with them. So mm-hmm. make, sh- make sure they understand what you're doing, who you're attacking, and let it unfold. Yes. Besides that, uh, Sentinel at Death's Door. This is pretty good as a reaction. You or an ally that you can see within 30 feet of you suffers a critical hit. You can turn that attack into a normal hit. There you go. No saves, no anything. Just bam. There you go. Reaction. You can use it a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. You regain all expended uses on a long rest. Now by 6th level, you should at least have like a plus 4 in your wisdom, hopefully. Dear God. So that's a lot of crits that you're saving in battle, which can be monumental. Oh yeah, that will turn the tide. Absolutely. Starting at 8th level, you add your wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. That's pretty good. Again, by that point, you should have a plus 4 at least in your wisdom. So, adding plus 4 to cantrip hits, that's pretty good. I'm cool with it. You don't get another, like, grave thing until 17th level, and that's your capstone. At 17th level, uh, it's for Keeper of Souls. You can seize a trace of vitality from a parting soul and use it to heal the living. When an enemy you can see dies within 30 feet of you, you or one ally of your choice that is within 30 feet uh, regains hit points equal to the enemy's number of hit dice. Whoa! So, it's a lot of healing when people die. You can use it only if you aren't incapacitated. Once you use it, you can't do so again until the start of your next turn. So, Whoa! yeah. One per turn! <laughs> Per oh, turn. Wait, wait, this is a reaction, right? Um, I'm going to say yes. It doesn't say. It just says, when an enemy you can see dies within 30 feet of you, you or an ally of your choice that is within 30 feet of you regains hit points. It doesn't say anything about reaction, your attack, somebody else's attack, whenever. This is just like until a free you, action. Whoa, holy shit. Basically, yeah. It's a free action <laughs> until the next of your... Till your next turn. Not the end of your next turn. The start of your next turn is what it says. Holy so that's really if good. like the barbarian kills somebody right next to you, heal. Then you kill somebody right next to you, heal. Right in a row. Yeah. So. This would be a good time for your DM to not send any weenies at you. <laughs> at 17th level, I hope not. Shit. Yeah, but that's... it's also kind of a double-edged sword for the DM because if you throw something big at us and we kill it, I'm healing for quite a bit. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, but that's the grave cleric. It's a little different than your normal. I want to heal everybody cleric like a life domain. But uh, yeah, that's that's my thing. That's why we didn't see critical role go to level seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> Matt knew that shit was coming and was like, "Fuck that noise." Yeah. <laughs> 
What was Jester? She was a trickery domain cleric, right? That's probably. I know she was a cleric, but like she only healed X amount of times. <laughs> yeah, you could probably count on one hand the amount of times she healed. <laughs> like how many times was basically just like, oh no, Ford after they hooked up. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the most amount of healing that she did was after she got a boyfriend. <laughs> Damn. Right. <laughs> um, oh, but I guess speaking of the life domain cleric, that's the one I chose because this is like the cream of the crop, Healy cleric. This is what you choose when you're forced to be the healer. <laughs> you are a heal bot. Yes, and that is all. You are a heal bot. No, 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 that's not all. But this is <laughs> that's what you do. You heal your friends because you love them. Um, so and your bonus... they're a bunch of drunk cats. <laughs> yeah. They just keep dying all the time. Um, the shitty, the shitty thing about the... Uh, I'll talk about the bad things about the life doming cal- cleric, but it's like all of the spells that you would get as a life domain cleric are shit that clerics would already have. So I don't really know why they're on the list. Like... At first level, you gain access to Bless and Cure Wounds. Well, no fucking shit. Like, (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah. It's just like, eh, come on, give me some better stuff. But, so other than the spells, which, again, are pretty much all on the cleric spell list anyways, (laughs) um, you, at first level, you gain proficiency with Heavy Armor. That's the other one that you can get Heavy Armor with. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Gotta... Well, they kind of got to because, you know, yeah. they're going to be the thick of it. So. Yeah, they're the ones that everybody's going to attack. Absolutely. Um, so one of their first things they gain is Disciple of Life. At uh, first level, when you use any healing spell, they are more effective. So you restore uh, hit points equal to two plus the spell's level. In addition to whatever you would roll. So, that's cool. Extra healing, you know, kind of helps you out. So you don't have to do a higher spell level, but you'll just get extra on top of that. Um, You get a channel divinity at second life, which is at second level, which is preserved life. As an action, you present a holy symbol to evoke healing energy that can restore a number of hit points equal to five times your cleric level. Choose any creature within 30 feet and divide the hit points amongst them. You can use this feature to restore a creature to no more than half of its hit point maximum. Um, And it's a channel divinity, so you get X amount of channel divinities based on your level. Let me see here. Um, one, two, at, at level two, you get, that's when you get your first channel divinity, so it's one per long rest. At sixth level, you gain the ability to do two channel divinities per long rest, and at level 18, that's where you have three channel divinities per long rest. Um... So this is a, a new channel divinity you can get. Uh, at 6th level, you uh, healing spells you cast on others heal you as well. Nice. Which is good because uh, the, the beefier healing spells are the touch spells. So when you cast a spell that is 1st level or higher, you also regain hit points equal to 2 plus the spells level. So just a little bit extra on top of there. Yeah, every little bit counts. I I know that there are plenty of battles where people have less than ten hit points left, and they're still you know that's where they end the battle, that they have less than ten hit points, and a couple of hit points here and there on heals, that'll add up. Um, at eighth li- eight level, a uh, divine strike. You gain the ability to infuse your weapon strikes with a divine energy. On once on each of your turns, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can cause the attack to deal an extra 1d8 radiant damage. 
at level 14, it's 2d8 radiant damage. Damn. It's like free money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then at 17th level, which is probably like, this is the best type of healing. Awesome. Cool. Um, if you would normally roll any dice, you just get max dice when you heal. So don't even make the calculation if you, you know, restore- Counter spell. <laughs> no, no, no. Because this is not a spell. I mean, the heal is a spell, but this ability is just- It just is. Right. It just is. No, I'm just saying, like, as the dickhole DM in an actual fight, that's when the big bad evil G would be like, counter spell. Like, but, but they're dying! Counter spell. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. That is Spare the, the counter spell. Yeah, rough. But then you get all those counter spells out of the way, and then you can do the real damage after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's fucking dope. You just get full healing. If you roll 2d6 to heal for, you know, cure wounds or whatever, nah, you just get 12. That's yep. how, you know, and then it all, I, I would believe that it also stacks with the Disciple of Life, which would be creatures gain an additional hit points of two plus the spells level. I would, yeah, yeah. I would <clears throat> count that. I mean, it's solid. Like, that's, it kind of goes along with that divine intervention. Like, you are starting to get that channeling of you are your god's avatar form. It's just, like I said, if it was the, you know, the final fight of the campaign, <clears throat> damn sure better believe, like, some of those heals, or, you know... A revivify. A revivify, counterspell, like, just watch the players, like, start to be like, wait, what? <laughs> Fuck. Yes. Like, do you realize what I just burned? Yeah, I do. That's why I did it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Stakes are real high. Real high. <laughs> yep. Counter spell is such a dick move. Yeah, on, bo on both it, sides. It works both yeah, ways. Yeah, it's both sides. It's such a dick move. Absolutely both sides. Because once, once the players start using counter spell, the DM's like, all right, I see you. I, yeah. I got you. Guess you're going to be a wizard. Guess there's going to be whatever coming up like with this buddy. Yeah, it, it, it's bad. Because, like, one-shot questers, both on TikTok and YouTube, because he's moved to YouTube. And he posts stuff, and it's just like, he posted as, like, the big bad evil hasn't been contained, or the players get, like, shitty rolls to try to stop him. And he finally does this ultimate spell, like, and he, on his video, he shows him basically doing, like, the Frieza death ball. Yeah, yeah spirit bomb. And the bard's <laughs> just, like, counter spell, and he's like, this is my ultimate spell, will you stop? <laughs> no <laughs> this is my whole life's work and he, the bard's like I want to live <laughs> and he's like well I'll cast it again counterspell and they're like will you stop this <laughs> and it's literally like yeah that's I mean the fun thing is when you start getting like the counterspell battles yeah yeah. it's it's you it's know. a box you can't unopen or yeah, yeah. there's a say what there's a saying like something you can't un something I don't know. Yeah, once you open Pandora's box, you can't put all the shit back. Yeah, essentially. So, I haven't been doing any counter spells. If When I get that level, I don't know that I will be doing any counter spells, because I don't want to open that box. <laughs> no, not at all. Right. But if the DM starts throwing them before I do, well, yes. I guess it's time for me to throw them too. Yeah, it, yeah. That's, that's when, you, you know, somebody has to make the first move, and then the <laughs> other person can act. Yeah. <laughs> So, yep. um, or Drake, whatever. Have you played, have you played very many clerics in your time? Um, on computer games like Baldur's Gate, stuff like that, yes. Uh, in person, I think I've only played a couple. I played one that, da, 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 da. sorry, I just had a thing pop up. Your PC's gonna die? Your peep? No, the PC was like Windows Defender and that popped up and it was like, oh hey, we just wanted to let you know that we scanned and didn't find anything. And I'm like, 
oh, cool, thanks for the mini heart attack that I had, because I just seen like, <laughs> bing, I'm like, oh, no, and it's like, oh, no, it's fine, like, oh, thanks, dickhead. Yep. Wow. Um, yep. But, no, I've pl- I played one years and years ago, and it was like a giggle campaign, and the DM told me, like, hey, you should play a domain of, like, worship this god, and I'm like, what is it? And he kind of, like, slid me the stuff for it and he's like i have it up on my computer if you want to look and i look and it's basically like the god of coin or whatever so it's just like oh hey you're dying Ah, this much for a heal so like literally we're in battle and like he would just have like a tally mark like okay so and so owes me x amount so like literally (laughs) i'd have a sheet of paper and be like oh i healed you for this it's one gold for per hit point, so, and, like, it was just one of those dick <gasps> That's things. That's amazing! Where... <laughs> so, like, oh, hey, look, the whole party gets, you know, 100 gold. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Monkey, I healed 12 hit points, so he gets minus 12 of that. Ray, he, I had to heal 50 points. Like, it was just one of those, like, dick things, like, so, yes, everyone gets 100, but then I get 12 of monkeys, 50 of rays, Yaka, I get 5. Like, so technically, I get 200, <laughs> and the rest of you get, like, it was just one of those dick things. Oh, that's amazing. That's an amazing concept. It is, isn't it? I love it. And, I mean, like I said, it was only, like, two or three sessions, but, like, the DM was telling me, like, he played, cause I think it was, like, 3 or 3 5. And he was like, yeah, I played a campaign once where literally he let a care a player character die because <gasps> they didn't have any gold. He knew they didn't have any gold. Whoa. Damn. And he went to the rest of the party like, hey, y'all gonna fit this bill? And they didn't have the gold. And he's like, well, they're dead then. Damn. Whoa. Like, not even like an IOU or a debt or anything like that? No, because apparently like the dude was like that died like was a pious paladin so like they were strictly like i have enough to like for my armor and weapons and like maintenance and i have no act like the rest of all of his gold went to the church damn wow and he knew that and like well i the party has to fork over this much and they didn't have it and he's like well Sorry. Guess you die. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> You're dead. Like, like that's... hearing that from the outside, I'm like, whoa, that's awesome and fun and amazing. Oh, no. But being in that party and having that cleric not heal me because I didn't have enough money, I would be infuriating. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'd be pissed. Yeah. Right. But I kind of want to do it now with my grave cleric. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Not, not, <laughs> not go as crazy as like, well, HP equals gold. More like, well, I saved you from death. That's ten gold pieces. Right. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like the cleric. I think they're pretty good class. They, you know, again, they get stuck in the healing cycle because that's what they're good at. But those higher level spells that clerics get are wasted on a cure wounds or a heal you know i think a mass healing word is an amazing spell like that's a good one mass heals a good one and healing words a good one but other than that they got some good shit they get like firestorm and earthquake and like all sorts of shit it's good I can't. I think it was the Dungeon Dudes. They did a thing about like how to play a cleric, and they were like, "Okay, right off the bat, they were like, if you are the healer in MMOs, don't play a cleric in D anD D because they are so different. Like in MMOs, you're just like, oh, you got damaged, heal. Oh yeah, you got damaged, heal. Yeah. They're like D anD D is literally like, I got damaged, heal me. How many hit points you got? I took like 10 points of damage out of 120. Fuck you. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, what are you talking they're like, about? you're just there to basically make sure like if they start to get to death's door that they can survive. That's why I like the Or you cleric. bring them back. That's the only time he's useful with heals is when they're at death's door. Yeah. 
Yeah, but the, like the grave cleric, you want them to hit zero exactly. and then like, to spare the die in. Exactly. It's like, oh, you have five. A regular HP? cleric, you're like, yeah. Regular clerics are like, oh, they're in like ten hit points. We might want to bump them a little bit. Grave cleric is like, you still standing? Yep, but you're fine. Yeah, don't worry <laughs> about it. You walk it off. I was gonna say it sounds like us with our kids. Like you bleeding? <laughs> nah, you're good. <laughs> nah, you're exactly. Fine. Don't worry yeah, about you're it. fine. You're Nobody's fine. done. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at the spell list for a cleric. I went to ninth level spells first because those are the well, most like fun. You, like you said, though, like, yeah, you got all these badass spells, but you're probably never going to cast them because somebody's going to be, like, down to two hit points up right first round, and you're going to go, God damn, heal. Yeah. Like, burn that ninth level slot to do, like, a heal. <sighs> nah, man. I, the, I, I love a healing healing word like i think that that is the most powerful healing spell out there i mean yeah you can you can bump it up based on like whatever level you cast it at but it's a 30 foot range and it heals you like wait is it 30 or 60 now that i think about that fuck fine healing word 60 foot 60 foot range and it's a bonus action. So you can <laughs> take an attack or do whatever you need to do in your first round. Then you can bonus action healing word and help the guy who was at two death saves. Like, it's, I, I think it's one of the best spells that a cleric has. Um, bard, cleric, and druid. They get the healing words. Uh, but ninth level spell, true resurrection, bananas. Absolutely bananas. You speak someone's name and you, <laughs> that's it. They can't be dead for more than 200 years. Mind you, it does cost 25,000 gold pieces. Um, that, the, you know, or yeah. diamonds, diamonds worth of 25,000 gold. But yeah, it, it just makes a brand new body for who have, you know, if they were eviscerated, if nothing was left, you could be like, hey, yo, bring my homie back. <laughs> <laughs> and and then there's your homie. He's Perfect. back. Like, nothing happened. Like, nothing happened. No poison, diseases, curses, nope. uh, missing limbs, anything is restored 1,000%. Absolutely bananas. Yeah, that's insane. That's God-level shit. That's like, insane. I mean, you know, ninth level spells, those are the highest level, you know, anything that people could do. True resurrection is God level bullshit. It's it's up there with wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only it's way more specific. I mean, it, yeah, but like, you could just bring anybody that's back from nothing. Yep. That's like a wish. I think that's a yep. wish. It's, it's insane. I will say, and I know I've said this to you guys before, or at least you and Yaka. I don't know if I've told it to Drake. Um, Cleric is definitely like lower on my list of things that I would like to play. Why it's not at the very bottom, but it's, it's just down there. Tell me about that. Why do you feel that way? I don't know. It's just they always get put into the heal category because that's what they do. And in previous experience... That's what they do. That's all they do. So, I don't know. I, I feel like they're wasted. Wasted potential. And I generally don't want to be that, like, wasted healing person. I'm only doing it with a grave cleric because I have to wait for you fuckers to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. it, it's definitely lower on my list. Like, top tier, I love the monks. I love playing monks. I have not done a monk yet in 5e. Um, but that is my shit right there. And then I'd say probably like fighters and barbarians, um, spell singer wizard. That shit's cool. I like my martial stuff more than I like all the magic. But, you know, the grave domain, I'm cool with it. Hopefully. Hopefully it's all good. If I die, I die. I've got like 30 other characters, so no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. But, you know, let us know. What are your some of your favorite 
cleric ideas. What do you like? What do you don't like? Stuff like that. Pretty sure that's all we got for tonight. So catch us next time on Busy Adults. Yep. See you later, guys. Deuces. Bye. Hey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our cleric episode for Busy Adults. If you want more of our content, please find us at your favorite spot to download your podcast and listen. Hope to see you next time on Busy Adults.